Lupa kejadian di waktu-waktu terakhir. Ensuring national security remains top priority under visa liberalisation policy. Polytechnic is a key player for technical and vocational education and training. Good evening and salam Malaysia Madani. You're watching Malaysia Tonight. I'm Shu Haida Arifin. Home Minister Datuk Seri Saifuddin Asutan Ismail emphasised that the security of the country remains the top priority in the implementation of the visa liberalisation policy. He said several prerequisitory measures are in place, including that all tourists must complete a Malaysia digital arrival card upon entry. Langkah kawalan yang kami buat seumpama so, pertama mereka masuk dan mereka mesti mengisi uh, digital arrival card ya, DAC itu mereka kena isi dan uh, apa namanya itu membolehkan kita tahu keberadaan mereka ya, uh, bermaksud uh, KDN melalui jabatan immigration telah melakukan mengambil seluruh langkah yang diperlukan. Di satu sisi lain, KDN juga memikul tanggungjawab dari sudut kawalan keselamatan pintu masuk negara. Itu semua langkah yang telah kami ambil kira. Previously, the Prime Minister has announced a 30-day visa exemption for tourists from China and India for the period between 1st December 2023 and 31st December 2024. Polytechnics will be the key players for technical and vocational education and training TVAT under the Polytechnic Transformation 2023-2030. Deputy Prime Minister Dato Sri Rotama Zed Hamidi said the transformation was a systematic and direct effort to strengthen the marketability of polytechnic graduates. Kesemua ini merupakan satu ledakan baharu yang menuntut kepada penyelarasan semua program latihan yang ditawarkan oleh Politeknik. Ia mesti bersifat very current and very relevant. Dan ia mesti menjawab kepada semua keperluan dan permintaan terkini pasaran guna tenaga. Saya mengharapkan semua konten atau kandungan pengajian kaedah pedagogi dan pendekatan pembelajaran mesti dirubah dan fokus kepada sesuatu penyelidikan dan inovasi mesti tidak dapat dielakkan lagi he said this in a speech when launching the 2023-2030 Polytechnic Transformation in Putrajaya. Dato Suri Rotama Zahid added that this transformation is a process of optimizing talent, potential and opportunities for the country to become advanced and competitive through the TVAT field. Towards this, the Ministry of Higher Education KPT formulated four goals, three strategic reform initiatives, 13 critical reform agendas and 18 strategic objectives. Minister of Communication and Digital Fami Fadil today hinted that there may be some good news for civil servants next year, most likely involving a salary increase. Fami, who is the Unity Government spokesperson, said the good news would also involve the pensioners and would be announced by either the Prime Minister or the Chief Secretary to the Government. Tapi masa yang sama ada dua perkara penting bagi mereka yang masih berkhidmat ataupun masih bekerja. Pertama, kita telah luluskan kertas putih dasar gaji progresif bagi pekerja di sektor swasta. Jadi insyaAllah bermula tahun 2024, pelaksanaan gaji progresif itu kita harap akan dapat memberi menampakkan peningkatan pendapatan bagi pekerja di sektor swasta. Previously, Prime Minister Datuk Seri Anwar Ibrahim announced that the government will be increasing the salaries of some 1.6 million civil servants in small amounts through Budget 2024 before an increase in periodical increments for every 10 years. 
Fahmi said this to reporters after delivering a keynote address during an event in the federal capital today. The Ministry of Finance MOF advised members of the public to be cautious of offers by irresponsible parties providing cash out or peer-to-peer -peer transfers of e-Madani credit. Statement to that effect was issued by MOF today to caution e-Madani beneficiaries from falling prey to scammers. MOF in the statement also stated that it will not be responsible for any loss of e-Madani credit arising from peer-to-peer -peer transfer or cash-out transactions. The government will also impose stern measures such as blocking the accounts or forfeiting the e-credit of those involved in peer-to-peer -peer transfers and cash-outs. The e-Madani program was launched with the objectives of stimulating the digital economy and fostering a cashless culture. It may be used only for physical purchases via the participating e-wallets, namely MAE, Settle, Shopee Pay and Touch and Go e-wallet or via Do It Now or QR code at 1.8 million retailers and businesses nationwide. Registration for the e-Madani program opens today until 20th February 2024 and is expected to benefit 10 million eligible adult Malaysians. A monitoring conducted through the Gamma Spectrum Water Monitoring System, GSWMS, from 1st October to 30th November found no increase in radioactivity levels in Malaysian waters. During the question and answer session at Dewan Negara today, Science, Technology and Innovation Minister Chang Lee Kang said the monitoring was initiated following the release of treated water from the Fukushima nuclear power plant into the Pacific Ocean by the Japanese authorities. IAEA dalam laporan yang telah dikeluarkan pada tahun ini yang bertajuk IAEA Comprehensive Report on the Safety Review of the ALPS Treated Water at the Fukushima Daiichi Nuclear Power Station mengenai isu ini telah menyatakan bahawa pelepasan air sisa terawat ke Lautan Pasifik adalah mematuhi piawaian keselamatan antarabangsa serta menyebabkan impak radio, radiologi yang boleh diabaikan ataupun tidak signifikan kepada manusia dan alam sekitar. However, as a proactive measures to ensure the Malaysian waters remain uninfected, Chang said the ministry through the Department of Atomic Energy continuously monitors the radioactivity levels using the GSWMS installed at the jetty of the Borneo Marine Research Institute at University Malaysia Sabah in Kota Kinabalu. Next up in our business segment, Ringgit to improve on better fundamentals. Malaysia is set to host more than 156 international business events and conferences with a high multiplier effect from 2024 to 2026. Tourism, Arts and Culture Minister Datuk Sri Tiong King Singh said these events and conferences are expected to generate an economic impact worth 2.3 billion ringgit. In a strategic collaboration between Motak and the Melaka state government, he said, plans are underway for a mega international event, the World Tourism Day WTD and World Tourism Conference WTC 2025, scheduled for 27-29th September 2025. To date, Malaysia has been selected to host the Global Celebration of WTD 2025, themed Tourism and Sustainable Transformation. Ini mesyuarat kita boleh dapat 3,000 peserta antarabangsa, at least lah, dan dapatan uh, daripada 159 negara. Tadi korang lebih ada uh, 500 ahli serta swasta UNWTO pun akan datang dan juga menteri-menteri pelanjungan daripada negara masing-masing. He also said that the choice of Malacca as the host for WTD and WTC 2025 signifies recognition of the state government's commitment and leadership in driving the development of the tourism sector, successfully establishing Malacca as a renowned global tourist destination. 
Senator Tan Sri Anifa Aman today suggested that the government consider Labuan as a startup and innovation cluster in an effort to help startup businesses outside Peninsula Malaysia gain easy access to assistance and support available in the market. Tan Sri Anifa said although there's a lot of help and support in Malaysia, especially in the form of funds and capital, startup companies in Labuan, Sabah and Sarawak often lag behind due to access constraint. Kebanyakan sokongan dan bantuan ini berada di luar cipayan mereka yang tinggal di Sabah, Labuan dan Sarawak. Kerana mereka perlu menghadiri proses pemilihan dan temu duga di Putrajaya. Akan menyokong pembangunan Pusat Perniagaan dan Kawangan Terbang Salabuan ataupun Labuan IBFC yang juga menerima manfaat daripada pengecualian cukai kepada entiti yang aktiviti kawangan dan juga perdagangan Islam. According to Tan Sri Anifa, the business centre has contributed more than one billion ringgit to the country's fiscal revenue in 2022. He also called on the federal government to consider the proposed construction of a bridge connecting Labuan and Sabah to stimulate the economy in both states. Shell Malaysia Trading Sederian Berhad is setting up an electric vehicle EV charging hub that consists of 10 charging bays in Resort Wolgenting, which will bring its total EV charging points to 146 units next year from 136 units currently. Deemed as the first ultra-fast 360-kilowatt high-performance charging HPC hub powered by Shell Recharge, which is the company's EV charging solution provider, Shell Malaysia said the EV charging hub in Results will contain is expected to be completed early next year. Definitely, Shell is continue looking to expand uh, to provide connectivity for Malaysia across Malaysia, and of Pahang is uh, Genting Resort World is our first one into the East Coast, and there will be more news coming. So, we definitely, we are looking forward to expand to more destination uh, to enable customer to travel freely in Malaysia. According to So, the all-in-one charging hub will outfit 10 bays comprising 4 bays of 360 kilowatt HPC and 6 bays of 22 kilowatt alternating current AC chargers. All chargers come with combined charging system type 2 charging connectors allowing EV drivers a super fast speed charging experience at the hilltop. So said the HPC hub in Resorts Wilgenting will be the start of the company's e-mobility expansion towards the East Coast. A total of 87,282 businesses have registered through the Free Business Registration Scheme, SPPP, nationwide from 1st January 2021 up to 30th November this year. The company's Commission of Malaysia SSM Chairman Ahmad Sabiki Yusuf said that out of the total, about 50,782 businesses were registered by B40 entrepreneurs while the balance was formed by full-time students from higher institutes of learning. IPT. Commenting further on the matter, Ahmad Sabki said SPPP, which was introduced on 23rd December 2020, was an initiative by SSM to enable B40 entrepreneurs and full-time IPT students to register their business under the Registration of Businesses Act 1956 with exemptions from paying registration fees. He noted that most of the registered businesses under SPPP consist of retail and small roadside food stalls. Following this, SSM calls out to all traders who have not registered their businesses to take advantage and benefit from the scheme. Meanwhile, Ahmad Sabki said some 2.2 million businesses, 369,671 companies and 15,114 limited liability partnerships were registered with SSM Selangor as at 31st October this year. Malaysia cannot control rubber prices in the global market as it does not have the majority say. Deputy Prime Minister Datuk Sri Fadila Yusof was also Plantation and Commodities Minister said. The government is aware and concerned about the current instability of rubber prices. Namun, intubasi daripada pihak kerajaan untuk penentuan ataupun kawalan harga adalah minimum memandangkan Malaysia 
dari segi pengeluaran getah asli hanya menyumbang lebih kurang 3% daripada pengeluaran getah dunia. Maka kita tidak mampu untuk mengawal harga getah tersebut. Datuk Seri Fadila said various factors influence raw rubber prices such as the performance of the rubber futures market, crude oil prices, foreign exchange rates and the economic growth of the major rubber importers and exporters. He said, nevertheless, the government is working hard to help stabilise rubber prices through several initiatives. The Deputy Premier said among the measures taken is to foster cooperation with other rubber production countries such as the International Tripartite Rubber Council Framework and the Association of Natural Rubber Producing Countries, ANRPC, to stabilise prices by managing supply and increase the use of raw rubber among the production countries. On another note, a dealer said the Malaysian rubber market extended last week's losses to close to lower today in tandem with the regional rubber futures market. The dealer said that the market sentiment was dragged down by the stronger ringgit against the US dollar coupled with losses in crude oil prices. Commenting further on the matter, she said the market also responded to the China and the United States economic data. Nevertheless, further losses were capped by optimism that China will continue its stimulus measures next year to support economic growth. The Malaysian Rubber Board's MRB price for standard Malaysian Rubber 20 SMR20 slipped 3.5 cent per kilogram to 663.0 cent per kilogram, while latex in bulk fell 0.5 cent per kilogram to 542.5 cent per kilogram. At 5 p.m., the reference price for physical rubber SMR20 stood at 662.5 cent per kilogram, while latex in bulk was 542.0 cent per kilogram. Regional currencies, including the ringgit, are expected to do better against the U.S. dollar in the coming year, backed by news and indicators that the U.S. federal fund rate is possibly close to a peak. Bank Negara Malaysia BNM Deputy Governor Adnan Zailani Muhammad Zahid said Malaysia's fundamentals are also looking positive with the government's announcement on various development projects related to infrastructure, energy transition and the new industrial master plan NIMP 2030. After 11 increases since March 2022, the benchmark Fed rate is now between 5.25% and 5.5%. Elaborating on the government's effort to reduce ringgit volatility, Anand Zailani said this is BNM's mandate and initiatives have been taken over the past year. He also expects more news flows in the coming quarters on foreign direct investments, FDIs, in the country. The deputy governor added that this will also create more momentum for the ringgit, which is why BNM is positive for the ringgit for the coming year and many market analysts have also forecast a stronger ringgit in the coming year. Malaysian banks will overcome external headwinds to deliver a resilient operating performance in 2024 with a strong domestic economic conditions expected to support borrowers and limit slippages into non-payment. SNP Global Ratings Credit Analyst Nikita Anand through a statement said asset quality for Malaysian banks would benefit from the country's stable economic conditions and low unemployment rate. The statement also said non-performing loans, NPLS, could peak at levels lower than its forecast of 2.0% to 2.5% in 2024. It noted that in the first three quarters since end 2022, rated banks in Malaysia have seen a manageable 3.0 to 14.0 basis point BPS increase in NPLS for domestic loans and these have mainly come from small and mid-sized enterprises and retail borrowers who exited repayment assistance. S&P Global Rating said Malaysian banks have contained their asset quality risks and more than adequately provided for potential bad loans. As a result, credit costs against your provisions for bad loans have fallen to a very low average of 20 BPS of total loans annualized for the nine months ended September 30, 2023, lower than 30 BPS for 2022. 
It added that Malaysian banks' asset quality is highly sensitive to any sharp rise in unemployment rates, following a larger share of household loans, most of which are mortgages and high household leverages. Foreign investors maintained their position as net buyers on Bursa Malaysia for the fifth consecutive week, with total inflow of 246.3 million ringgit. MIDF research said this was a reduction of 35.7% over the previous week, which amounted to 382.8 million ringgit. It added that the top three sectors with the highest net profit inflows were financial services, valued at 150.6 million ringgit, utilities at 132.2 million ringgit, and healthcare at 64.6 million ringgit. Meanwhile, the top three sectors with the highest net foreign outflows were consumer products and services, transport and logistics, and energy. As opposed to foreign investors, local institutions continued to net sell for the fifth consecutive week, disposing of 457.2 million ringgit worth of equities. After seven weeks of net selling, local retailers net bought 210.9 million ringgit on Bursa Malaysia last week, net buying every day of the week, something last seen since early January 2023. In terms of participation, there were increases in the average daily trading volume across the board among local retailers, local institutions and foreign investors. Bank Negara Malaysia, BNM and the World Bank today announced two key initiatives to enable the financial sector to support nature-positive outcomes in conjunction with the 28th Conference of Parties, COP28, at the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, UNFCCC. Through a statement released today, BNM said these initiatives will facilitate the integration of nature-related considerations into decision-making while supporting financial flows towards nature-based solutions. BNM Governor Dato Abdul Rashid Ghafur said the partnership recognises the implications of nature-related risks to a mega-diverse country like Malaysia. Meanwhile, World Bank Country Director for Brunei, Malaysia, the Philippines and Thailand, Ndiame Diop said Malaysia aims to develop robust measures to increase finance related to nature and this is a good example for countries grappling with nature-related financial and economic risks. According to BNM, the Risk Assessment Guide will be developed in consultation with the Task Force on Nature-Related Financial Disclosures, TNFD Secretariat. BNM and the World Bank will also facilitate the development of innovative financial instruments to support private investments in nature. Music streaming giant Spotify said it will reduce the number of its employees by around 17% in a bid to cut costs amid dramatically slower economic growth. Spotify in October posted a rare quarterly operating profit of 32 million euros, compared to a loss of 228 million for the same period a year earlier on the back of 26% growth in active users for the third quarter. The company's chief executive Daniel X said that in 2020 and 2021, the company took advantage of the opportunity presented by lower cost capital and invested significantly in team expansion, content enhancement, marketing and new verticals. Spotify has invested heavily since its launch to fuel growth with expansions into new markets and in later years, exclusive content such as podcasts. It has invested over $1 billion into podcasts alone. In 2017, the company had around 3,000 staff members, more than tripling the figure to around 9,800 at the end of 2022. The company has never posted a full-year net profit and only occasionally quarterly profits despite its success in the online music market. Netanyahu will be tried as war criminal. There are more coming up in our foreign segment.
Chinese President Xi Jinping and Alexander Lukashenko hailed the strengthening ties on Monday as they had talks during the Belarusian leader's second trip to Beijing this year. Lukashenko, a staunch ally of Russia, arrived in China on Sunday for a visit expected to last at least two days. Lukashenko last came to China in February, a trip that drew scrutiny given Moscow's invasion of Ukraine. Xi in turn said political mutual trust and international collaboration between the two countries had grown stronger since Lukashenko's last visit. Xi said China firmly supports Belarus in taking the path of development in line with its national conditions and opposes interference by external forces in the internal affairs of Belarus. The Chinese side is willing to continue to strengthen strategic cooperation with the Belarusian side, firmly support each other and promote pragmatic cooperation. Beijing has not publicly condemned Russia's offensive despite pressure from the United States and other Western nations. Belarus really relies heavily on Russia for political and financial support and was used as a launchpad for Moscow's assault against Ukraine in February 2022. Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan today said that Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu will likely be tried as a war criminal over Israel's ongoing offensive in the Gaza Strip. In a speech to a meeting of an Organization of Islamic Cooperation, or IC, committee in Istanbul, Erdogan said Netanyahu admitted that he is pursuing expansionist policies, adding that defending Gaza right now is the same as defending other Islamic cities in the region. Gazze kasabı Netanyahu meselenin Gazze veya Ramallah olmadığını yayılmacı hedefler peşinde koştuğunu kameralar önünde bizzat ifşa etti. Dolayısıyla bugün Gazze ve Filistin'i savunmak demek Kudüs'le birlikte Mekke'yi, Medine'yi, İstanbul'u savunmak, Şam'ı, Beyrut'u Bağdat'ı ve diğer İslam beltelerini de savunmak demektir. Türkiye, which supports a two-state solution to the decades-old conflict, has sharply criticized Israel over its campaign in Gaza launched since 7th October. According to Gaza's health ministry, more than 15,500 people have been killed in the Israeli air and ground attacks. Now, Israel, meanwhile, has ordered Palestinians to evacuate several more areas as it widens its bombardments of the Gaza Strip, killing hundreds. The Israeli military today declared that it was defining safe areas for Gaza civilians to minimize harm to them. However, hundreds more Palestinians have been killed since the onslaught resumed last Friday, and it is unclear where civilians might seek safety. Right, and that wraps up this evening's Malaysia Tonight. In our top story, ensuring national security remains top priority under visa liberalisation policy. Do tune in to World Today coming up tomorrow at 12.30pm on TV2. From river to the sea, Palestine will be free. I'm Shuhai Darifin. Thank you for watching.